I had an interview with a very interesting guy on this podcast and uh, you're going to listen to it in the month of November. And uh, what this interesting person told me about purpose, he mentioned something to do with interest. He talked about passion and he said that he's never seen someone being fed by passion. He says that it's it's much more of interest, commitment and hard work and also Alongside with it, a lot of discipline. And in this series, we are discussing the idea of how do we raise purpose-driven children. And I want to come back to that idea of interest for a minute in today's episode so that we can understand how interest of a child is important for you to raise a purpose-driven child. Now, listen up. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Well, a small recap will help here. In order to raise purpose-driven children, number one, teach them about the purpose of money. I'm not going to belabor that. You can go back and uh, you can find out in the previous episodes we've discussed that in an extensive way that money has three major purposes. Of course, you can talk about many other, but the first thing, money is for impact. The second thing, money is for personal growth. And the third thing, money is for reward in that order of priority as in you teach them that order of priority on the importance of money and guess what they're going to start understanding issues related with purpose all right i can still go and continue talking about it but i don't want to i do that quite a lot the second thing you need to teach about purpose is this you need to make sure that you ask them occasionally the why question why are you doing what you're doing? Why this and why that? Because when you ask someone a why, they're going to give you a purpose-related answer. If they don't have a purpose-related answer, they at least are going to start thinking about purpose and also do some kind of course correction in order to fit into purpose. But if they love what they're doing and they're excited about it, you know, they will tell you the answer. And when they tell you the answer behind it, it is up to you as a parent to start leaning into that answer and providing an environment through which, and we're going to talk about that today, provide an environment through which that answer can even be fostered much more. Let me give you an example. If a child is interested in other people, for example, maybe grooming them and so on and so forth, that is a purpose-related answer because purpose is always about others. It's about transformation. What do you do? You provide an avenue through which they can grow customer service, they can grow you know, their, their skills and their talent so, they can, so that they can be able to serve other people. So ask why questions. Number three or number four, make sure that, number three actually, make sure that you are answering the why question. Because at times, in fact most of the time, they will, they're going to ask you very many questions. Sometimes they ask a why on top of another why, a nested why, and so on and so forth. And they keep asking and keep asking. We should be patient enough. Every time a child asks you a why question, it is an opportunity to learn for them. It is an opportunity to learn purpose. It's an opportunity for you to teach them purpose-related stuff. And take time as you're doing this. I know we will need patience. I know we will need 
a lot of fortitude in order to do that. Number four, if you are raising a purpose-driven child, guess what you need to do? You need to live your purpose yourself. They see, they catch the vision more than they are taught the vision. They see you steeped into your purpose, sweating it out, getting frustrated with it, cracking it and having eureka moments, aha moments. You're excited, you're connected, you're speaking your passion, your purpose with a lot of passion and you know, you love what you do. They get to know that this is how life is supposed to be lived and they start looking for them to do the same thing as their parent is doing whether it's the mama or it's the dad it doesn't matter they are aping what you want to do they copy they catch the vision they absorb their sponges we talked about that yesterday you can review it today in order to live and raise purpose-driven children one of the things that you and i need to do number five is to make sure that we work it out together this is what i was talking about when i talked about interest let me tell you something interesting there is no child who doesn't have interest have over and above toys and and sweets and so on every single child has an interest in something not just one thing but quite a number of things and some of those things that they have interest in. And you will see, by the way, if you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. Your son will be interested in computers and so on and so forth. But your daughter will be wanting to go out there and play with the kids, with other kids. Your son might be interested in, let's say, an, a specific aspect of the computer. But your daughter will be interested in a, the computer, yes, but a different aspect of the computer at the same time. They are different. The issue is that each and every single one of them has an interest. And this is where parenting comes in, especially in raising purpose-driven children. Because you have to understand one thing, that purpose is not an event. Purpose discovery, purpose deployment is not an event. It's a lifetime thing. We were born for purpose. And therefore, it is an opportunity for us to start experimenting with all the interests that they have. Whether they have uh, the, the, the passion for it or the skills for it, you don't know. So if they are interested in coloring, what do you do? You buy the coloring books and all the painting, whatever it is that is necessary for arts. And I know it's expensive to do all that stuff. And that's why we are parents in the first place. We've got to pay the price for these experimentations. Some of them, you know, the first time they want to do something and you make it available for them, you easily realize the disinterest in them. Or you realize the lack of gift, lack of talent in the thing that they thought they were interested in. But it is part and parcel of working it together with them until you land on something that becomes a mainstay. And let me tell you, you will identify what is a mainstay. You will identify a mainstay of interest in them because they are always obsessed with it always going back to it always frustrated when it's not working you, you see sometimes when you don't love a thing and it's, it frustrates you what do you do you leave it all alone i mean you leave it alone and you you walk away altogether but you find that the interest that they had in something sometimes my my daughter cries over some things that are not working they are harassing her and so she cries because she wants it to work. It is an interest that she wants to pursue. If she wasn't interested in it, she would walk away from it at the end of the day. I mean, there are very many other things that she could dedicate her life to or dedicate her time to. So what we're saying is that you need to learn to experiment with them and to give them the time and to give them the environment through which all that stuff is going to work. And the best way to learn is experiential, experiential and experimental. It is the best way for any child to learn. And I love what the SE curriculum is doing, which is actually helping the kid to learn by themselves, not to have some teacher pouring information inside of their head. No, but they are Googling, they are learning, they are researching, they are finding out, they are teaching themselves. We could teach purpose-driven children using theory or using visual aids. However, 
Working it out together is the real deal. Experimenting on the interest that they have come up with. It is the real deal. It is really how they get to learn and internalize. It could be done in two ways. First, we get involved in their projects by encouraging them to, you know, keep doing them and mentoring them through it. As I mentioned earlier, as a child, you know, you can pay for another child's fees. I mentioned in some previous episodes. If you get to mentor them that way, it can be that big. That can be their interest. And before you know it, it's a purpose-driven interest right there. When a child is helped to identify people that they can impact and they can help, and they can, you know, gather resources together, and you can influence them to be able to see that project come to a fruition. But we do not do this because, you know, we are not intentional about this. A child who is mentored this way might start applying themselves, you know, in different ways than they will do in a theoretical kind of a study. They might see the importance of making it in life, having a reason big enough, a why enough, being higher than just pursuing making it in life now they are seeing the reason for my existence is to help somebody else maybe pay their school fees how can i raise money to pay someone else's school fees who who is downtrodden who does not have the opportunity that i do have myself so you help them by getting involved in their projects so let us learn to get involved in their projects We've mentored them through the projects. These are purpose-driven projects. Go out there deliberately in the community and see something that needs transformation, needs change. And, you know, cajole them or prod them or push them or encourage them one way or another to get their hands dirty and get involved in that particular project and come up with a solution. My friend has an organization that is raising solution thinkers and basically that's how you raise purpose-driven children we're going to continue with this even as we're drawing to a close of this episode in this series but until tomorrow when we're handling a different topic in the same series think about experimenting with them getting involved with them and experiencing life together with them bye-bye